What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for more content for you guys. And we're going to be looking at all players out on loan from Tottenham Hotspur. Give a bit of a review, see how they're getting on. Some good, some bad. And let's get into it. And let's start off with Sergio Regulon on loan at Manchester United. Three starts in the Premier League, one sub appearance. One start in the Champions League, one sub appearance and one start in the Carabao Cup. A bit of an up and down loan spell from Sergio Regulon. He was getting some good reviews from uh, Man United fans before that injury. Since the injury, he has had limited game time. Um, have you seen much of him? Um, did he start against, um, in the last game against Luton at home, I think. I think he might, or he might have come on. I remember seeing him on the pitch. But um, I haven't seen much of him since that injury. He hasn't played um, as much as he was beforehand. Um, but it's funny because probably Tottenham could use him. He now. did start. <laughs> he did start against Luton. I think he was having a pretty decent game. But um, I think he started um, the first few games really strongly. And then lately hasn't been as good. But as I think that's his first start since the injury. Um, uh, Ten Hag has actually preferred Dallow a lot uh, to Reglon, with Reglon even being on the bench for a lot of the games with Dallow starting at left back. Maybe that's because Dallow is a bit more defensively solid. But um, looking at Reglon, I don't think he's pulling up any trees right now. Uh, Man United, whether he stays beyond January, um, we'll have to wait and see because Luke Shaw is, um, I guess, going to be returning at some point. So, um, but the thing is, Tottenham, would he be playing for Tottenham right now? If uh, he was he, here, I reckon he probably would have in the game against Wolves. Mm. But with Destiny Adogi probably back, he would have come out the team uh, in the yeah, next game. Um, but like you can, can't recall someone just to play one game. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Um, but yeah, look, I don't think he's really benefiting Man United that much, albeit when he has been starting. Um, I think they've they've done um, fairly well. I think he's done. Sorry, he's done himself fairly well, but. It's not, I don't think he's, I'm not looking at his form and thinking, I wish we, he was here, basically. Yeah, but I still think it's actually gone better than probably most people would have expected him going to Manchester United. You know, some positive displays. Um, he's actually in the back line, been one of their better performance when, when playing. So I think people probably would have thought, people thinking that it's gone a bit better than maybe planned. I don't know. I don't think he's been gone particularly well. I, I don't think it's gone particularly well. I just think it's gone better than planned. I think he's a good player. I don't think he's. A, I don't. I'm not surprised he's able to put in some good performances, in my opinion. So, um, I don't think. And he's got, he got an injury, which kept him out for you know kept out the squad for three games. He when he's come back, he hasn't been starting. Only just recently got his place back. Whether he keeps it or not remains to be seen. I think it's gone okay. I don't think it's gone better than expected, in my opinion. Mm. Well, it depends what you expect from Sergio Reglon at the end of the day. Um, but look, he he's done okay okay it's it's not great not bad um and i think look they'll be quite happy with him having him as cover with uh, the big injuries that they do have well, we, we have our own problems in the defense uh, but let's talk about jed spence now this is a concerning one where he played 10 minutes for his debut back in september the second just after he made the move he's been injured with an ankle problem ever since however recently he is almost back in contention now and uh, there's been some comments from Daniel Farke he's been speaking about him and he said uh, we need him right now as well because it's not just eight weeks he was missing also a difficult pre-season he's had to work um, even more disciplined and more professional than any other player to be back at his best level but I get the I get a good feeling about him he's a good guy and he needs uh, sometimes a push in order to be on it because uh, he has so much potential but we don't um, have to speak about his ability and potential he's got a good heart and hopefully we can bring the best out of him although he's had little setbacks with his injuries so it seems as though Daniel Farke believes in him and maybe now um, he's getting over those injury problems we'll see more of him in a lead shot but it's weird comments because if someone saying he has a good heart and talking about his professionalism is almost like he's trying to convince people he's a professional player in a way so that also indicates that there have been some issues mm. and but like he's trying to like convince people look he's i know there's been some issues but he's got a good heart he's i i think he's a good boy like you wouldn't if the, if a guy is like no one's gonna say that about like you know ben davis or something it's just like everyone knows it you know what i mean yeah so it's a bit it's the, those are strange comments but hopefully he can get back fit and start proving himself on the pitch and really do his talking with the ball because, you know, how it's been, what, two years now since he got any sort of consistent games. I mean, he had a little run for Ren, but apart from that, he's uh, been really dogged with injury or not, you know, didn't, didn't wasn't picked at all under Conte. Um, so 
his, his career is in real danger of uh, really stagnating at the moment. Yeah, it's a really big shame because he was one that I was really excited about when we did sign him as well. I thought he would fit a Conte system like a glove. Conte didn't want to use him and it's just gone from bad to worse to be honest and even now in his loan spell uh, blighted with injuries so hopefully he can get over those injuries and start performing and and start performing in a really good Leeds team as well who are fighting at the top of the championship uh, but a success story so far in the loans is Joe Roden also at Leeds he's uh, started 12 games one sub appearances uh, a lot of Leeds fans calling on them to to uh, sign him personally, uh, to uh, sign him permanently. permanently. And um, he's picked up a number of man in the match awards as well um, in Leeds. He's been a standout performer in a Leeds team that have got the second best defensive record in the championship as well. Um, so look, I think Roden is performing really well at Leeds and maybe on the back of this, that Leeds will take him up permanently. That's really good news. Or even if they don't, someone else will look at his performances and think he's worth taking a punt on, considering we probably want, you know, probably maybe five, 10 million for him or our money back. I think we spent 12 million on him in the end from Swansea. So that's really promising. And I'm very happy for him because his career has been not, not been going great ever since he joined Tottenham. Again, another player was at Wren last season who started it well and then lost his place and led to some inconsistent playing time for him last season. So I'm really glad he's finally settled somewhere got some consistent playing time and actually proving what a good centre-back he was showing when he was at Swansea uh, a few years ago. Um, so hopefully that continues for him because, at the, again, another player who Tottenham ha uh, haven't really dealt with very well ever since he came here, never got a consistent run properly um, under a few different managers, never really fancied. And then I think Rem was his only loan spell in his time at Tottenham, uh, well, apart from this one. And that was a bit of a mixed time. So... Hopefully he's on back on track proving what a good defender he is. Yeah, and um, obviously he's a player that we could be using right now, though, uh, with the problems that we have at centre-back. Mm. Do you think that he's a player that we could be using or do you think that from what he's shown out of his loan spells and out of his career so far that the championship might be his level? It's hard to say, but um, is, he a, is he a player? If he was here right now, would he be picked ahead of Dyer and Davis? Um I still don't think he would. I, he wasn't when he was here, and they, Darren, Dave, Darren Davis were here. He was still he was still wasn't picked um, ahead of them. Um, so I assume he probably still would be down the pecking order. But I think profile wise, I don't think he's the fastest, but he's strong. He's tall. I don't think he's great at playing out the back either. So he's definitely got his deficiencies from what I've seen at Tottenham. Maybe he's improved them mm -hmm. uh, this season. Maybe Farke's very an offensive manager. He likes to play football as well. But what I'm saying is that the, the, the time where he's had like most consistent run of games and the best form has all been in the championship and he hasn't seemed to get his chances or even when he did get his chances impressed too much. Yeah, I mean, it's difficult to say because he had only little spells under Mourinho where he actually didn't look terrible. Mm. And then under Conte just wasn't picked, under Nuno wasn't picked, um, under, who else was it? That, I mean, obviously back end of last season was out on loan at Wren anyway. Um where he had a mixed time, but I don't know. I don't know if he seemed out of his depth or what happened at Wren, but he seemed to play quite a lot in the first part and then got dropped. So mm. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I don't know. But definitely a successful loan spell so far for Joe Roden. Let's talk about an unsuccessful loan spell so far, and that is Jaffet Tanganga at Augsburg. Still yet to make an appearance uh, for Augsburg. He's been absolutely blighted time there with injury however he has got he got himself in the first time in a match day squad a couple of weeks ago but the following week after that he was left out of the match day squad again so um he's been limited to one bench appearance in his whole time there at Augsburg so far it's a, it's a story of uh, Tanganga's career really these injuries that have always um, held him back and that's such a shame because you really hoped going to Germany, he was going to start to find his own way. And obviously, there, there's a clause in the contract that 50, if he plays 50% of games, it uh, becomes an obligation to buy. So you would have hoped that if he does that, and he kind of starts to find a home, starts to really build his career again after what was a promising start to his Tottenham career, but has really fallen by the wayside due to injuries and also lack of selection and also lack of loan moves, a lack of playing time. But considering he joined uh, Augsburg and, as you say, hasn't played a minute, that's that's heartbreaking so far. Hopefully, he just gets himself fit for the second half of the season and starts to play games again. But right now, it's just the same old story for Jaffet. And he, at, at this point in time, you're thinking about he's probably going to be returning at this point because is he going to play 50% of games? Yeah, it doesn't look like it at the moment. Not even one minute. So, but if he starts playing soon, he could. Yeah, look, yeah. it seems as though like maybe he is getting over these injury problems, but... 
I want to know why he was on the bench and then why he was left out the next week. That, that's relapse, that's a bit yeah. concerning. Mm. But let's talk about Tangi Undombele, another unsuccessful loan spell so far. One start in the league, two sub appearances, three sub appearances in the Champions League. Hasn't seen any minutes for nearly a month now and has had a reported bust up with the manager over um, his dietary requirements <laughs> and his uh, fitness issues and overweight issues. Well, there were rumors, I don't know how true they were, but these are genuine reports coming out of Turkey that he was caught. Um, snacking on burgers after a Champions League game, which apparently wasn't they weren't happy with. And I mean, that sounds like a, a a parody of himself, but that is what was reported. I'm not even lying about that. So, I mean, based off those reports, it's obviously very concerning for Ndombele uh, about what, if they they don't want him if he if he's come back to Tottenham and whatever issues that brings itself, it's uh, not a great situation. I really hope to go out to Turkey. Just it'll be a league for him where he can really like dominate with his quality but he can't even show enough professionalism to get himself in the Galatasaray team. Uh, Galatasaray team, we seem pretty good as well. They've got some good players. Zaha's doing well at the moment. they got that guy, uh, their number seven. I can't remember his name. Mitroglu. Yeah, him. He's playing really well. I saw them play. Icardi's up front. Like I saw them play against Man United, and obviously they beat them at Old Trafford, and what was a really good game. They're giving... He played that game, didn't he? He came, he came on came in that on. game, yeah, but... Like I'm saying, there's a good team there for him to play with, and he can't even muster up the professionalism to see a minute. And... Um, it's, that's just the story of Indombele, unfortunately. Yeah, and there are suggestions and reports coming out of Turkey that Galatasaray already are in negotiations with Tottenham to cut the loan spell short. We should reject it. We should reject he's, he's it out of problem. hand. He's out of hand. <laughs> um, one of the biggest success stories so far of all the players out on loan has got to be Alfie Devine at Port Vale at the moment. Um, six starts in the league, six sub appearances, two goals, one assist. In the FA Cup, he's had one start. In the Carabao Cup, he's had three starts, one goal, one assist. So that's 17 appearances and four goal contributions are ready for Alfie Devine. And he is making a bit of waves in the in League One at the moment for Port Vale. Um, I've watched the highlights where he has done those goal contributions. He's doing some impressive stuff out there for Port Vale and also um, in that Carabao Cup run I think they're in the quarters or something yeah, Port for Vale and for the exactly for the first time <laughs> ever and it was uh, solely down to not solely but he had a big part to play in in dragging them there so big up to Alfie Devine and there were reports from I think it was for Ali Gold last week or someone else saying that um, maybe with the development that he's showing this year that he will be coming in to be in contention for the first team next season. Yeah, playing in, in midfield as well as a 19-year-old is never easy, even uh, even in League One level. And he seems to be uh, performing extremely well at the moment, getting rave reviews from the Port Vale fans. And I, I saw the highlights, I think it was against Macclesfield, they played in the last 16 in that tie. And um, it was, obviously he scored a great goal, actually picking up the ball from the halfway line, beating the player and scoring the 25 yards but he was actually central to like a lot of the chances they created as well he seems to be doing a really great role offensively um they seem to be using him in a few roles like in sentiment they've used him out wide as well so he seems to be quite versatile but that goes to show um his capabilities and i think the fact that he's playing so well at such a young age as well is really really promising and he seems to be carrying himself very well as well out there at Port in Port Vale. Everyone seems to be a massive fan of his. So he seems to be going from strength to strength. And obviously he's a player that everyone's been very excited of about for a long time, ever since, uh, even when we signed him as a 15-year-old, I believe, from Wigan. And then he made his debut, scored his debut in the FA Cup against Marine. So people have been very excited about him for a very, very long time. He's always been a const consistent um, performer at under 21 level even at a young age of 17 18 so the fact 16 i think yeah, yeah the fact that he stepped up into proper men's football league one and is getting goal contributions playing really well um consistently that's a really promising sign and i for one if he can you know keep this up for the whole season i'm more than happy to have him as an option next season the only problem i would have is if you look at our midfield options um you know, you've got, you got Saar, you've got Basuma, you've got Madison, you've got Ben Tancor. I just, I wouldn't want him to come in and then stagnate, but hope, uh, hopefully we find a place for him. I think um, he could be a really good option off the bench. Obviously, we'll be in more, hopefully, back in Europe next season and um, in back in the Carabao Cup and go deep in that competition. So he, he could see a lot of game time in these kind of competitions, in my opinion. So I, I would like to see him uh, come back and be in and around the first team. And you've got to remember as well, players like... 
Pierre and Mohoibier will probably be out the door as well. So look, there could be opportunities for him, maybe not even from centre mid, maybe from other areas of the pitch. He's a very versatile player. So um, I think I definitely see there could be value of him being here next season. Mm. And next up, we're going to talk about Troy Parrott in, in Excelsior in the Eredivisie. He's had two starts, seven sub appearances, three goals, one assist. Those three goals all coming off the bench uh, where he started. All those seven sub appearances all came in a row. In the last two games, he has started both those games, grabbing an assist in the making. So Troy Parrott um, also making a bit of waves in the Eredivisie and starting to see starts now as well. Yeah, which is really good to see. Obviously, I would like to see him have a few more starts, only two so far. But yeah, look, he's making an impact off the bench. That's all you can ask for when you're a substitute. And I've seen some of the finishes he's he's uh, done so far, and they're pr pretty good. One of them was a last minute volley to win to win a game against I think it was um, um, Rotterdam, and I think he scored from 25 yards as well with a really nice finish. He got an assist. I, I believe it was on the weekend he got the assist. Yeah, in his start. Weekend. Yeah, yeah. So that's also really good. So hopefully, um, the more he starts games, um, the more time he can get to um, get those goal contributions and really up his goal tally. And if he can end the season, you know, with well, he's on three goals now, if he can, you know, it's still, it's still November, if he can get maybe 10 goals, that'll be a very good, that'll be very good. And even if he doesn't come here, back here to fight for a first team spot, it also shows the value that he can potentially hold and we can get a bit of money for him. Yeah, because he's still, what, he's 21, 22? Yeah. Like 10 goals in the Eredivisie at that age. I mean, it's, I mean, it's nothing amazing, but it's still something to show that he's got good quality. Yeah, absolutely. And last but not least, let's talk about Dane Scarlett. Nine sub appearances only for Dane, not one start yet. But in the last couple of games, he has been making a bit of an impact. Um, three games ago, I think it was now, they were 2-0 down to Birmingham and he comes on with about 15 minutes to go and they draw the game 2 all. and he actually uh, played his part in both of those goals. He didn't get a golden or assist but he was involved in the build-up play, maybe the pre-assists as well, so he definitely made his impact coming off the bench in that game. However, in the last game, he did come on with about 10 minutes to go and in, within three minutes he got booked and a lot of the reports said he should have been sent off, so um, maybe that shows a bit of a bad streak in his game but he has made a slight impact in the last couple of games it just shows he's a bit feisty he's desperate to make an impact which i can appreciate but obviously you shouldn't overdo it by you know making bad challenges um it's a shame again scarlet was another one everyone's very very excited about um last season again when he played for portsmouth he was getting i remember at the beginning of his loan spell was getting rave reviews and scoring goals and then again it kind of uh the manager changed didn't it the Ugh. manager changed it fell away and stopped getting minutes so this time Hopefully, once he earns it, look, I think Ipswich are still going pretty well, aren't they? They're joint top of the championship. So, it's it, look, it's difficult to get into that team because they're playing very well and I've seen some of the football they've played. But hopefully, when he, if he does get starts, he can really grab that opportunity with both hands. At the moment, it just seems he's restricted to um, substitute appearances, which is a bit of a shame because I'd like to see him get more minutes. Um, but it, he look that's the name of the game. And when you're in men's football, that's what you've got to deal with. And when you get those subs, when you come on, it's up to you to make the impact and, sh and show the manager that he's got no choice but to play you at the moment. Seems though he's not doing that, but hopefully it's still in November. It's a long season. Hopefully you can find time to do that. If it comes January and it's still the same, just limited to 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. Uh, but on the other side, he is in a, a successful team at the moment, fighting at the top of the championship, potentially could get promotion to the Premier League. And um, would you consider bringing him back and maybe sending him a bit lower down, maybe to another team where he's going to get more minutes? Yeah, I would. Because I don't think it's, and there's, there's no use him just getting sub appearances 10 minutes here. And it's, it's good for him to be part of a, to know what it's like to be part of a team who's high flying the championship and be around that environment. I think that is a good thing. But, I just think for his development, he needs to be playing more. He can sit at Tottenham and get 10 minutes here. And ten, I mean, he won't, but I mean, it doesn't it doesn't help him that much just getting some appearances. He needs starts and he needs to be showing what he can do um, up front with more minutes than what he's getting at Ipswich, unfortunately. And probably in a, in a weird way, what held him back a little bit in seeing minutes was playing in that cameo appearance in the uh, cup game when he came on at half time uh, against Fulham because mm. then he was cup tied um, going to Ipswich and couldn't play in the cup. Yeah, which in hindsight probably wasn't the smartest move. Yeah.
But look, that is your loan watch and loan update for the players that have been on loan. I would say like the most successful ones, obviously, Alfie Devine and Joe Roden. The other ones are a bit flattering to deceive at the moment. Right. Troy Parrott as well. Yeah, I'd put him in that category. Yeah, you're right. But apart from that, no one really uh, making waves on their loan spells. But let me know your thoughts on everyone that is out on loan at the moment in the comment section below. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on, you Spurs.